Good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Forrester, and welcome to this, the first of NDS Perspectives. We're going to try and examine topics which are really current and important in the, uh, in the television environment. Uh, today we have, uh, for our Future of Entertainment panel, we have two uh, VIP guests. On your extreme left, Nick Thexton, Senior Vice President, Research and Development and New Initiatives at uh, NDS. Good morning, Nick. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, and Bo Olofsson, Director of Product Research at B-Sky-B. Nick, if you don't mind, I'm going to jump straight to Bo. Bo, tell us a little as to what you're doing at Sky and uh, uh, how important, uh, well, you see the future of, uh, of television and broadcasting. <coughs> Yeah, so we have a, a team of about 25 people at Sky where we do technology future gazing is probably one way of describing it. We go out talking to vendors, talking to research institute universities about where they see technology going and where they're working on. And what my team tried to do is to bring that into Sky, uh, sometimes just as sort of vendor demos, but we also try to push ourselves for building prototypes uh, someone, someone pretty developed that we can sort of play around with and some, sometimes we do some mock-up to show the people within Sky, the business owners, the product managers, where technology is going and how it can be used. Now we've all got rooms or houses full of uh, other devices, uh, whether it's iPads or tablets and uh, uh, televisions in other rooms. Um, how is Sky handling that side of the business and then Nick I'll come to you and see what help you can provide. Well of course uh, we, we already have that and already on our on our product roadmap today we have multi-room functionality uh, either through Digiboxes or more and more we're using the SkyGo and other technologies. That what my team is looking at is sort of the way we're going to solve that problem in two years time, three years times, five years times and then you know we can play around with more more technologies that we see out there that are certainly not mature to put into the mar market today, but you know, might be in, in a couple of years' time. Now, Nick, at uh, NDS, you, you are looking those two and three and four and five years ahead Absolutely. because your R&D is what he's probably going to buy tomorrow. So how is your thinking going? Well, I think for the last couple of years, we've obviously embraced the idea of multi-device viewing. And the question is, really, which devices are the best consumption devices? The, the role of the living room is still incredibly important. Um, and when you actually analyze back what makes television great, it's still actually a living room experience. So the ability to fragment or split off that viewing and have it in a more convenient form is really where most of the new devices are taking us, I think. And uh, it's, uh, it's interesting to reflect that it's really only about 18 months since the iPad came into our world. And, and I think that before that, television in the living room was one of the primary consumption devices. With the iPad, we found another. How many more there are, I don't know. But the point is that we have to find a way of knitting all of those together. And I think that... Um, what we can see is that uh, the ability to put the living room still in the middle is important and then bring a cluster of other activities around it, both in terms of taking the content with you, moving it to other locations in the house, and also giving you the contextual stuff while viewing on the iPad is a, is a, a great place to go. And I think that's, uh, you know, as you can see at the exhibition in here, you'll see that that technology is getting quite mature now. No, uh, sorry, Bo, go ahead. And, and I think one of the things that you pointed out that it's important that we start really understanding the difference in those viewing experiences. As you say, Nick, we are completely agreeing that the, the main living room viewing is still the main. Now that started to be, you know, it's a social experience. You interact with the TV content, maybe it's slightly different in the future, but that we know that. What we need to understand more is how is the viewing when you take it on an iPad right. or a mobile phone or in, in, in different environments, and, and there's differences in that. Uh, you both, uh, you Nick said contextual, you said social media, because, because our homes are no longer, if you like, dependent on one trusted source, wh whoever that source might be. We're being bombarded by, uh, by ingesting of material. Um, how, how can we possibly begin, because you've got to solve the problem, navigating our way through those options? Well, there are a number of ways you can start. Obviously, one of the, the you know, by br building contextual links between the plethora of other content which is out there, you can start to uh, give 
associations. And again, here we can, we can see this on the stand here this year. But I think that the, the, the way it's going is that metadata, which is a very boring word, but very important, um, is going to drive our future. Because the, the, throughout the whole production pipeline, all the way through to the home, we're going to find metadata is, is driving and helping us make those connections in an ever more intelligent way. Um, and I think that the systems that are out there right now are fairly basic and sort of taking baby steps towards making those links. But we're going to see an awful lot more sophistication in the way that that, ser that not search, because I don't really believe in search on TV, um, but something which brings that problem of selection and, and choice made more sophisticated will come about and is already starting. Uh, Bo, here's a challenging question. When you launched Sky Plus, um, it's no great secret, the audience didn't quite get it. So to what extent are you placing products and concepts and ideas in front of your audience and to what extent are um, your viewers um, uh, pulling information or, or new technologies from you? How do you, how do you balance that? Well, I, I think it's a good question reflection that of course, when we in the industry, we read our industry magazine, we read all the hype and things, and, and we think it's already there, we think everybody's screaming for it, but of course, reality is that our core audience is at a very different stage. And, and, and sometimes we also have to realize that we have different kind of audiences. We, we do have the early adopters, we do want the one that wants in and out, and, and I think we have to, uh, as, as an industry, become better in actually placing out those experiences and, and letting people opt in or opt out for what kind of level of sophistication they want. And I, I think we're getting better at that. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you, you have to hold back things, you know, things that are ready to launch from a technology point of view, the user base might not be ready for it. Uh, and uh, Nick, w when, you're, when you're looking at, at, at trends, when you're looking at uh, the, the likely patterns going forward, um, and we all know that things can come uh, out of the blue and, and, and bite us in the backside. But nevertheless, you've got to handle this stuff. Your technology has got to handle this stuff. Uh, and we're, we know we're going to get hundreds more, maybe thousands more channels. And if you look at the, the YouTube type options, uh, unlimited access to content. Um, how are you going to handle that? How is your uh, little box going to handle that? Well, I don't think actually the, the box is going to be the problem. Um, the box is not really the limit, it going to be a limiting factor. It's really a case of uh, being able to do aggregation in an intelligent way. And whether that aggregation happens inside a guide, a traditional grid, you know, we still have grids after all these years, um, and they're still the way that people think about accessing content. Um, how you bring all of those thousands of channels into a world where you know, a grid can just carry on forever, a huge landscape of content with many, many, many channels and lots and lots of time. So I think that it's the aggregation problem, how you communicate something which is meaningful to a viewer. Because I think most of us, when we get home at night and we want to you know, watch television, not only is it a lean back experience, so you can't get a keyboard out and start, well, some people of course think you can, but uh, <laughs> anyway, I will remain nameless about who that is. Um, <laughs> um, but we, you've, you've got a very simple control mechanism. And the second thing you have to be able to do is realize that most people are very lazy when it comes to television. You know, they, they, if you can't get to content within a, tens of seconds quickly, people will just go back to watching what they always watch. So getting some disruption and helping people navigate is really the challenge. Bo? From a <coughs> you, you say, how can the box handle that? But I think the one benefit we have or, or, or the one weapon we can use going forward is that it doesn't have to be done in the box anymore. When we look into the future, and I don't want to sort of make any prediction, but I, I don't think we're going to see it like it's one set of box anymore. It's going to be a combination of services, and some of them, of course, going to come over the internet. You know, from the famous cloud, yeah, yeah. which we bought in February. That's we bought the cloud. Then uh, we we are going to do be able to do a lot of things offline or or in in the cloud, which means that we can throw a lot of computational power at it. But but you've got to present some sort of menu, some sort of well. Uh, well, then you, then you're into the UI problem, which okay. I absolutely agree. It's 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 a it's a huge challenge, and then that's where we have to start 
working much more personalization, contextualization, and we have to make this the box smarter. But the good news is we don't have to be limited to the power of, of, of computer page, computational power or rendering power that we have on the box. Now, you mentioned a second ago, uh, you're a full service broadcaster. You're broadcasting to kids and grannies. Uh, and I'm not suggesting for a second that the older generation um, is not perfectly capable of, uh, of doing whatever they want to do in terms of navigating their way through the options. But um, kids of 15 and 16 and 20 and maybe even 24 and 25, this is tomorrow's generation and they are consuming um, content in a very different way. Absolutely, but I think the key thing is they are consuming content. True. And they're probably consuming content to a higher degree than some of the other generation. Absolutely. So, of course, we, we, we have to respond to those things. And, and of course, they want to be able to interact with their friends virtually or, or over the network they're on while they're watching content. They want to be able to stream their content to where they are. So, so clearly, a lot of the, the demands that we see are, are being driven about that kind of you know, generational, it's not only a generation, I certainly have sort of older people wanting to do that too, but, but that's what, where we have to see, we have to see how we can respond to that without overwhelming the major exactly. user base with all these things today. I mean, is, is, is the, the provision of Facebook or Twitter apps on a screen or having that option on a screen, is this important to you or might it only be important on a second screen up in little Johnny's room or... Well, I mean, now we're getting into almost religious views here, but certainly we are of the... V we, as a company, and my personal view too, is that when you're watching TV, you want to watch TV. Now, if I want to interact with my friends through Twitter or Facebook or Google+, Plus, I want to do that probably on a second screen. Now, I know that we both are working on some experiments when the notion of a screen maybe changes over time, you know, but as long as we have a screen that is the screen, you know, 40 inch, 50 inch, 55 inch, I think that's what we're going to see. But imagine that you're starting to see that we're not talking about the screen, we're talking about your wall. Yeah. You're talking about yes. you having a much bigger area where you can do things. And then you can probably start saying that you can integrate those kind of other communications. Is, is it important, Nick, to the way your clients w want you to develop services and product? Is it important um, that you uh, uh, um, provide options for these new technologies? And as I said a moment ago, technologies that might come out of the, this show tomorrow and be a, a, a smash hit in six months' time. Yeah, definitely. I think that the, we do have to be mindful of options, although most of our traditional customers are the operators around the world. And what we obviously put, put effort into is to helping them build value into the operator platform. That is where we begin our thinking. So I think unlike, um, you know, we don't always just start from the position of saying, how could we deliver this content as a web service in a more creative way? What we have to do is also allow operators choices about the kind of partnerships that they want to build as well with local, local providers of data, local, even, even uh, working in a social context with application developers as well. I think that the, the, it's going back to your point about the 15-year-old plus mar market, I mean, as you rightly say, they're clearly not, they, it's not that they've stopped watching TV, it's just that they're, and they're watching a lot more of it. It's true that cat videos, you know, can only have a certain amount of, uh, you know, life. And in the long run, people like talking around content which is popular, you know, it's live, it's, you know, an event-based sort of t television. And therefore, you know, the logical thing for us to do is also not just provide social infrastructures, but just make the television experience absolutely fantastic. So, you know, embracing 4K, 8K and higher forms, as we were just talking about before, I think is pretty important because um, you know 4K video. You can now 4K video is here. It's just it's coming over the web. It's not coming over broadcast networks yet. So I think we are positioning ourselves to make sure that th that sort of content can start appearing on these operator platforms in a way which adds value. Uh, one of the uh, one of the titles that I write for uh, has a little credit alongside my name, and it says Chris hopes to live long enough to see 8K video into his home, uh, and I think there's a there's a reasonable chance that might just happen. I think you de I think you've got no problem. <laughs>
Uh, but take um, your vitamins. Uh, pardon? <laughs> take your vitamins. <laughs> uh, but Bo, you're the guy. You're the operator. You've got to finance this operation. You've got to uh, um, uh, fund the, 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 the transition to yeah. these new technologies. Mm. Um, that's an expensive hobby. Oh yeah, and, and 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 of course, in the end, we as technologists, we can play around with whatever we like, and we do, and we love it. But in the end, there got to be a commercial reality how you deploy these things, and. In the 8K, which we dream about, and you know, hope to see, you know, the, the network challenge about transmitting that. Even though satellite, you know, probably would be the first to do it because with the bandwidth we had there, it's going to be a very big financial challenge how you do that in in a way that is commercially viable. And and in the end, we are we are a, a public listed company, and that's that's where the decision in it becomes hard. We 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 can come up with any kind of cool technologies and, and say that customer wants it. If there isn't a, a business model behind it, it won't happen. Uh, um, let's just mention, because the show is still full of 3D and 3D concepts and plans for 3D, and you've been an innovator in 3D, oh, yeah. and, and I know the you're not responsible for programming, but there's more money going into 3D from, uh, uh, from Sky. Um, uh, what's your sense as to what's happening in 3D in the broadcast arena? Well, uh, we, we still feel a, a lot of excitement happening. Uh, we still see a lot of people bringing out better TVs. I was just watching here on the floor. Uh, 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 stunning 3D, you know, still the glasses, still sort of stereoscopic, but completely flimmer free and really bright, which enhances the, 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 the experience of 3D. Uh, we see a lot of money going into content. Uh, production. We, we know James Cameron is here this year to talk about his experience. So we're still very excited about 3D. Of course, we, we in my team, and uh, hope to start seeing proper no glasses TV or ultra stereoscopic in a couple of years' time. And we see some early prototypes that points in that direction. And that's, of course, where we want to get to. But in the meantime, we're signing up new customers with 3D every day and we're doing more and more shoots uh, in, in, um, in our schedule on it and, and people love it. Uh, Nick, yeah. um, what, what, what are your clients uh, yeah. other than Sky? What, what, what's their view? No, I, sense? Think, I think 3D certainly is of getting in, getting interest because obviously the the opportunity to start broadcasting it and also receive it is not a big it's not a huge step. In other words, it's not like a transition from say SD to HD was um, a few years ago. So I think increasingly, if if uh, the content is you know available and also they they can bring it onto their platform quickly i think that uh, 3d will be just a f an important feature it's a part of our kind of a constant upgrade of the tv experience and i think whether it becomes the dominant mode of viewing for different events i think that's more interesting because of course event led 3d it's going to be yeah. event based yeah. um, and i think that movies of course have been the battering ram for bringing content quickly into the marketplace which was already really coming from the world of movies but i still think events are going to give even more excitement around it and i think that events generally play to this theme of, sh of glitz which i think will work well and, and some of the 3D content I've seen through Sky and through other demos of, of non-movie and non-traditional sport yeah. in 3D has been stunning. It really has Absolutely. been compelling. If you haven't seen darts on 3D, no. you're, you're in for a treat. <laughs> it works very well. Um, uh, in your view, pay TV is preparing for that future without too many challenges? Yeah, of course. You know, we, we, we still have a fundamental view that to be able to produce great locally produced and relevant content you have to have a model that supports sure. that and our pay tv model has been doing well and and we're still very confident that we're going to be able to invest in, in more content so nick final question for you please yeah. um uh, what must pay tv operators do to prepare for this future just write you out large contracts <laughs> why <you know>? not <laughs> that sounds a good idea <laughs> no i think that they they Obviously, technology decisions are tricky for all operators about when, at what point, they make those decisions and how they migrate. I think the most important thing is that bringing an OT over the top strategy to most operators is going to become increasingly important, whether it be through a progressive download of content uh, to the box, uh, utilizing the existing infrastructure, or whether it be a more radical step of looking at a, an over the top 
uh, relatively thin client, but a high graphics quality end device. And I think operators will mix these devices inside the constellation of, of uh, their offerings. So you'll find a mixture of them. So I think that um, pay TV is in a good state. And I think actually it's in a stronger position potentially than ever. ever. Um, I, I, I couldn't uh, disagree with that. Uh, Nick, thank you very much. Bo, thank you very much.